Welcome to our tutorial about using controls. Let's begin by inserting a new table. Rows, let's say 10. The width in pixels, 400. And click OK. First, let's bring in a couple labels onto our table. Let's also use a couple text boxes. Now we'll rename our labels and boxes. Let's caption the first label name. And we'll call it LBL name. The second label, we'll name LBL email. And let's caption it email. Okay, now let's do the same for our text boxes. The first text box we'll call txt name. And the second one, oops, the second text box txt email. As you see, we're obviously manipulating the controls in a manner very similar to how we manipulate a Windows form. Now let's bring in a couple radio buttons. We'll put them in the same cell. Left arrow, left arrow again, and enter. Here I'm going to type some text instead of using a label. This field we'll call sex. This radio button will caption mail or M and we'll call it RDBM. Next, the second radio button we'll call RDBF and we'll caption it for female F. Now let's run our application to see how our radio buttons work. Here's our browser. As you can see, the labels look straightforward. They look identical from the user's point of view, basically. We can type anything into the text boxes. However, we've got a problem with the radio buttons. We're only able to select one of them, and we're unable to deselect the selected radio button without reloading the program. To make them work together, we've got to group the radio buttons. Let's select the radio button, and let's look for the group name field. We'll call it sex, and same for the female radio button. Here's an extra one. Let's delete it and run our program again. It's loading. Okay, once we group the radio buttons, we're able to select either one. Okay, now let's try the radio button list control. Under the radio button list tag, select edit. First, let's add a member. Say level 1. Level 2. And let's add a level 3. Say we want level 1 to be pre selected. Click OK and let's type select level. Obviously, this radio box list will work together. When I load my page, first level 1 is pre selected automatically. Let's try a different control, a checkbox list. Click Add Member. Our text will type English. Our next member will be French. And let's have English be our pre-selected default. And let's call it language.
Gotta fix my spelling mistake, though. French? Now let's use a hyperlink. This text will caption terms and conditions. The navigate URL, something like terms.html. The target, we're able to select this property as well. For example, if we want the page to open on a blank page. Here, let's use a regular checkbox. Text, we'll caption it agree. And we'll name the checkbox CHK agree. Our last control will be a button. Oops, let's fix this. Let's caption the button next. And we'll name it BTN next. Now let's load our page. Here's our form. We can check all the boxes. It seems to work OK. If I do click on the Terms and Conditions link, it opens a new browser window, but it's not able to find the page since I haven't posted anything to that URL. So I'll get the error 404 message, page not found. OK, let's add one more control. I'd like to try out a drop-down list. Let's close our application. I'd like to have another row under the email row, so let's right-click and insert rows or columns, select rows, the number of rows, above or below the selection. Let's choose below and click OK. Let's call it state. And let's drag in a drop-down list. Select edit items. Our first entry will be select state. That's what we'd like the user to see by default. And let's enable it, make it true. Let's add another item. We'll add some more states, California, Florida, Idaho. How about Texas? I'm not going to do all of the states here. Let's just click OK. And we'll name this drop down list DDL State. In our next tutorial, we're going to add more functionality to this form. This concludes our first tutorial about using controls.